Okay, let me give you a little more uh, sort of astronomy information about some of these things that we're finding in the night sky. Now, a little less visual, a little more factual here. So I'll sort of label this stars because I couldn't think of any other thing to call this. Okay. So firstly, here's a size comparison of some of the things that I, hopefully you're now able to find in the sky. Of course, it starts with the sun right there. And Jupiter, as large as that is in our sky, is just one little pixel. So you see there's the sun there. And there's... Sirius, which we didn't cover, but it's a very bright star in the sky. Just another one out there for you. Here's Pollux here of the two brothers, and you can see how much larger it is in the sun. Then there's Arcturus that you arc to. And so, see, Arcturus is just absolutely huge compared to our sun. So it's a little bit of a factoid you can get out. And even Pollux is the head of one of the twins. is even very large compared to our sun. So if you or anyone you happen to be camping with thinks that the sun is large, well, there's some things that are much larger out there, as you can tell, and you, you just found them. And our Arcturus, again, is going to be that, have that really orangish hue. And so this is actually a photograph here of uh, some overexposed, not overexposed, but highly exposed um, camera view. Oops, I'm not spelling it right. That you would get when you arc to Arcturus and spike to spike it. So you can see the orangish nature of that huge Arcturus. And, of course, there's Spica right there, uh, very bright and a little bit bluer. Um, the next thing that you can sort of do, though, a bit factual, uh, which helps you with your visuals, is these things called angles in the sky, which sort of look like this. So as you're sitting there, maybe do a little experiment. Take your right hand and extend it all the way. In other words, make your elbow very straight like this. So just sort of, if you're maybe sitting or standing or something, take your arm and make it go all the way straight. Maybe that's your elbow right there. And hold up uh, one, two, three, four, five. Just your little finger. I know this is terrible artwork. I know, I know, I know. But just hold up just your pinky like that. And it turns out that if you look at your pinky like this, when it's, again, your elbow is straight. Make sure that your arm is very straight like that. When you look at your pinky, then the width of the pinky in the sky or anything you're measuring is one degree. So if you can even look around the room that you're sitting in, if you sort of hold up your pinky at arm's length and see if you can just exactly cover something in the room with your pinky. I'll just do it here. I'm looking around. Uh, okay, there's a light on the wall opposite to my back where I'm sitting, and there's a bulb in it. And if I hold my pinky up, I can just cover the bulb with my pinky. So in other words, where I'm sitting, there's a bulb right here, which is part of sort of a light that's hanging on the wall. And if I cover it up, I can't see the bulb because my pinky's in the way. In other words, my pinky right here is blocking that bulb right there. So in this case, I would say the bulb is one degree in size. That's sort of what you can do. Again, you always have to make sure your elbow is straight. Just lock your arm as, as far as it goes. And it just turns out... You know, whether we're tall or short or whatever, or however we've grown, our bodies just sort of seem to grow in these proportions that if you stretch your arm all the way out and look at your pinky, whatever you can cover with your pinky is one degree. And it keeps going. Three fingers like this will be five degrees. Your whole fist is 10 degrees. And if you sort of do this um, pinky out and index finger out like that, that's something like 15 degrees. And I think there's another one in here that I can't quite get. Yeah, here we go. Uh, different slides. Sorry about that. There's another one down here which I can't quite get to, but I have it on this next slide here. That little review. Here's the pinky. Here's the three fingers. Here's the fist. Here's the two fingers, extreme fingers out, 15 degrees. And if you go all the way out to the tip of your thumb, that would be 25 degrees. So you see, as you sort of use your hand, you can use your hand sort of as a, uh, oh, let's just say an angular ruler for the sky. And these angles are very important because we don't want to talk about how far something is in feet or miles we just go with the angles and that'll do just fine so how can we apply that to some of this sky stuff that we're learning about well what we can do is we can go back to the big dipper okay which we know and this is what i'm talking about the size of the big dipper that if i looked at the big dipper and stretched my hand out my pinky to my thumb as far as i could do could go held it at arm's length that would form the size of the big dipper in other words if i held one finger like this, and here's like one, two, three, four, and then my thumb all the way out like that, then the extent of my hand would sort of set the whole size of the Big Dipper. And so you could say that our good old friend, the Big Dipper, is 25 degrees 
why like that and you just have to go try this because again if you hold your your hand up like this even in front of you that might give you a little glimpse about just how big the big dipper is in the sky it's very big because if you're thinking maybe well as you look at the sky you can see half of it which is 180 degrees and the big dipper is going to consume 25 that 180 degrees it's quite large and so it turns out that then the north star is about 28 degrees off of the last pointer star doobie right there which is almost 25 and so once again if i held my pinky up like that one two three four and then maybe my thumb out like that this i know this is a really weird looking hand but it would just sort of because this is only 25 degrees and this is 28, you can almost stretch your entire hand to reach the North Star. And likewise, you can size different parts of the Big Dipper, like the width of the bowl is 10 degrees and 15 degrees to one of the point stars, that kind of thing. And so this is what you can do with your hand at night. Okay, and I guess I'll sort of lastly leave you then with the full map then. This is sort of the... the star hopping guide to start sounding really smart to your fellow campers out there. Uh, so what we've covered so far here is you've got your Big Dipper right here in the center of everything. You always want to find that. You can bang. You can go find Polaris. You can go diagonal down on the bowl to find the Twin Brothers, Castor and Pollux like that. And you can arc out this way to find Arcturus. And then you can spike down to spike it like that. And we'll just leave it like that. I'm not too concerned with Deneb and Vega, although they're very bright and nice to see. But this can just go on and on and on, but we sort of need some limits, I guess. But then um, you know, Capella is also something that's relatively easy to find from the Big, Big Dipper. But we'll stop it from there. And you can see some of these lines that they've chosen, at least in this image here, always sort of go on the straight geometry of the Big Dipper, like straight down on that edge, straight across the top, straight down the diagonal, that kind of thing, to make it sort of easy to visualize these lines in the night sky. And so we're about done sort of with this section. And so what I'd like to do now in the next couple of videos, I would like to go to the other side of Polaris. So the other side of Polaris here, let's just say this is the other side because there's a couple of very wonderful things to find over there, in particular Cassiope 